Are you glad you came this morning? Oh, we're here for you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence. We ask you to move freely in this place. Lord, there's nothing more we can do than give you thanks. Because you have done so much for us, Lord. Our heart is open right before at your feet. to make you proud I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm but I won't go down I hear your voice carried in the rhythm of the wind to call me out You would cross the ocean so I
Psalms, he was, he, he was such an honest, honest man. Uh, he would tell it like it is. Uh, some Psalms, there will be Psalms of rejoicing and praising God. And, and, and you can tell in his voice, just what an incredible excitement. Uh, uh, he, he would take care of the sheep. And I, I'm sure that he would jump for joy just like those animals would. But also, he was very honest in some of the Psalms where he was like, God, where are you? Uh, I, I don't see where you are. My enemies are right at my footstep. And, and where are you, God? And, and he was very honest in, in saying exactly how he felt. And I can tell you that some of those psalms are the most beautiful psalms for us to read. Because we can connect with them. Because I don't know who, else, who told you, but this, this, is, this is not true. When you become a Christian, life all of a sudden 
doesn't just suffering disappears, pain disappears. No, 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 it keeps coming. But the good news is that you're not alone anymore. It's that the Holy Spirit is right there with you, guiding you and walking with you. And in the middle of your suffering, in the middle of your storm, in the middle of your sickness, God is Jehovah Jireh. God is worthy of it all. He's worthy of your praise. So I hope that you're not here praising God just in the times when things are good and the weather is delightful. I hope that you are here praising God even in the middle of your tears, even in the middle of what am I going to do tomorrow? I hope that you are lifting up your hands and singing that he is worthy, that he is Jehovah Jireh, that he is our everything. Even while your back hurts and your knee is in pain, even when your headache is just too bare, too, too, too strong to bear, whatever the moment is, lift up a shout of praise. Lift up a shout of hallelujah. Lift up a shout and say, yes, you are. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of all the things. Father, thank you so much for your mercy and your grace, for continuing to bless us even in the middle of our mess. Thank you for being there, for never leaving us. Thank you, Lord, that you come and you just simply remind us that you will always be with us. Always we will be right there. For I am with you. That's what you told Paul in the book of Acts chapter 18, which we're about to get into. For I am with you. Let that be echo in our hearts that you are with us. Not just when the weather is nice and our bank accounts is full, but you are with us whenever the scorching heat of our personal life and that sun that is just coming down on us. And when we don't have enough, you are there right there with us. You are right there with us in Jesus' mighty name. If you believe that, if you agree that, come on, say it loud. Amen and amen and amen and amen and amen. Amen. Uh, as you take your seat, go ahead and look at the person next to you and tell them God is with you. God is with you. Come on, tell, tell somebody else, tell them God is with you. I do want to welcome back Johnny. Johnny, welcome back. You were missed. Thank you so much. Johnny and Alexa, just uh, they have such a beautiful baby uh, girl, Lana. She's at home, and she's here, actually, as I saw her earlier. So we are grateful. Uh, parenting, especially a newborn, is difficult. Amen, parents? All of you who are parents, this is difficult. And so we are grateful that, they, uh, that she is safe. And that he is back. So I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Right there we are. Would you lift up your hands? There's such a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. Father, thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you that you want to speak to us. This song definitely reminds us, Lord, that you are there. That you are our provider. There's many of us, Lord, right now that we are struggling with our four walls. Just our basic needs, Lord. Some of us are a little afraid because we've heard of uh, job uh, cuts and uh, we've heard, Father, of, of downsizing, downsizing and we're a little afraid, Father, of what's to come. Lord, I pray that even though, through this message, through this word that is powerful, that your word would lift us up and reminds us that you are our Jehovah Jireh. You are our provider. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, I'm teaching, uh, we're teaching uh, the youth how to worship. Uh, we're teaching them that when we sing songs, it's not a uh, concert. It's not, you're, you, you're not just an spectator. You just don't simply just stand and stare and watch. Um, that's, uh, that's not what worship is. Uh, worship is a, a corporate gathering of us singing phrases and words that are on the screen that you know or not and then we include our hands as a sign of surrender or or, or as a sign of I, 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 I just need you Jesus and sometimes if you know the song you close your eyes because all you want to do is just focus on the one who deserves all your worship and all your praise and I was telling them that sometimes songs like Jaira you know, you would think, well, that song came from, uh, you know, uh, 
it's people gather around just having a good time. No, no, actually that song came during the COVID season and during the time when we needed God the most. And I want you to know that your suffering, your pain, everything that you go through, there is a song inside of you that God wants to bring out. And sometimes when you don't know the lyrics, you can just simply say, Jesus, 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 I worship you. Can we try that here today? I want you, I'm, I'm going to encourage you just to close your eyes right there where you are. You don't have to worry about anything else. Your hair looks great, ladies. Don't worry about it. Guys, you, you, you're handsome already. You're, you're, you're good. If you're able to, I encourage you to lift one or two hands and just say, Jesus, I worship you. Jesus, I worship you for who you are. Jesus, I worship you, for you are my provider. Jesus, I worship you. I worship you for all that you've done. And I thank you. There's another good word. I thank you that I am here with my family. I thank you that I'm here on my own praying for my family. And I believe that you are here as well. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Beautiful, 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 beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. So, church, uh, uh, those of you who are watching, my name is Irvin Peralta, part of the pastoral team. We're just, we're just having a good time in the Lord. Amen, church. We're just having a good time in Jesus. It's definitely different to worship corporately than to worship on your own. There's, uh, there's nothing wrong. Uh, sometimes, anybody here, you have your best worship moments in your car? Come on, somebody, right? You have your best worship moments in your car. When that song hits and you're like, yeah, Jehovah Jireh. And no, you don't care what anybody else is saying or looking around. You know what you're going through and that you need those kind of songs. So welcome, welcome. Uh, we're in the, uh, chapter 18 of the book of Acts. Ten chapters left, church. I can't believe that we are continuing to find treasures. I should say it's not surprising that we are finding treasure after treasure after treasure of knowledge and wisdom and strength in the Word of God in the book of Acts as we study the, um, the history of our church. Uh, we have been in this book, those of you who are just joining us for the first time or second time, we have been in this book since the month of July, if I'm not mistaken. This is a great book for us to just continue just to feed in our spirit. So as you go to your Bible, whether you have it on your phone or I encourage you to have a physical Bible so that you can smell those pages and be able to bet your phone is perfectly fine or it's up here on the screen as well. As you're going through uh, looking for chapter 18, I want to remind you that uh, Christmas is coming around town. It's right around the corner. I'm just trying to make some eye contact with the people that I look shocked and surprised. Christmas is around, is around the corner. Uh, in case you didn't know, Christmas happens at the same date every year. Did you guys know that? December 25th. Go ahead and tap your neighbor and tell them, man, that's some wisdom right there. Uh, December 25th. In case, the reason why I say this is because all of a sudden we act like Christmas, what? And then now we're putting everything on credit card. No, 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 no. And all of the financial people say, amen. No, 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 no. Your son, your daughter does not need an $800 PlayStation 5. They need a mom and a dad who are debt free and can love them and hug them and tell them, listen, I don't want to work three jobs so that I can give you that PlayStation 5. You're, you're perfectly fine with the PlayStation 3 that we found in a garage sale, and those games are still working. Amen, somebody, right? Amen, amen. Now, listen, we love our children. I know we do. We love our kids. And you know what? More than anything, we love their, their face, their facial surprise and their, and their reaction. When you, how many of you, you love just to, just to video that when they open the box and they have that reaction? Let me see. Let me see. Come on. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. All right. All the non-gifters. Thank you so much. I see you. I see you. Okay. Okay. How many of you, you like the reaction you give yourself, right? Oh, my God. I got this. You bought it on your, you bought it yourself for you, but you're still surprised. Well, listen. Tell you what. This is a great surprise. Go ahead and put inside of a box, put some vegetables and fruit, and let them open that. See what kind of surprise they get, right? Come on. 
Don't, don't, don't do that. That's mean. Don't do that. But here's what we do encourage you to do. You got some things at home that you don't use right now. As a matter of fact, you have some clothes that you said, I'm going to fit into this clothes very soon. <laughs> don't look around. Just, 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 just. you do because I do. I do. I put on a jacket this morning that wasn't this one, and I said, nah, that looks two sizes too small, all right? And so, you know what? You got some things at home that you can sell. You got a good garage sale weather right now that you can put together, and you can start posting some things on, on Facebook market uh, that are pretty good condition that you can get rid of, you know, get some money. And then with that, that is a, smart way, is a smart way for you to go and spend some money that you have physical money. Please do not use something that you're going to get in debt with because uh, it's all fine and dandy until, until all of those interests start to come up. And then that's where we're <laughs> frustrated, we worry, and we can't enjoy life. So please, please, you got, you got a couple of weeks. Somebody smart, somebody who already has a calendar, somebody who already has a Christmas tree, please let me know how many, uh, how many days till Christmas. How many days till Christmas? 48. 48. Thank you. We have the Christmas people over here on this side. All right, let's see. Let's be honest. How many of you have your Christmas tree up already? How many of you have your Christmas Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys already got your Christmas tree. Yes. We want to see some pictures. We want to see some pictures to all of these people over here who, uh, you know, including myself, who I don't have it up there yet, but we will. So anyways, this is just free, 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 free. And those of you watching, please, the greatest enemy, the, the greatest weapon the enemy has is the uh, manipulation of our uh, 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 making us think that what we're doing is okay and that is going to benefit? It, it's a lie. It's a lie. Don't go through that uh, through that th- through that road. Instead, just focus on what can I do right now? What can I do something right now so that I'm not leaving my family with all of this debt behind? Uh, be creative. I wrote these things out. This is something that we practice with our family. This is just. I'm not, I'm, this is not the law. This is just an, an example. So be creative with the adults. We don't give gifts to each other. We give snacks. So this is our favorite snacks. So we just do a list of snacks. And so, for example, we'll give uh, Jonathan and Tabitha, Pastor Leo, my mom will give them a bag of snacks. And let me tell you, that is d- d- delicious because they last pretty long. So this is something creative to do within, within the adults. And then for the kids, we always get them three things, something they need, Something they, uh, uh, they, can, uh, they can wear and something they can read. Something they can read. Uh, we also throw in the one, something that they want. So uh, something they want, something they need, something they can wear, something they can read. Please, please do not forget the power of literature, the power of reading. The power, the power of reading. Uh, I've mentioned this many, many times, but, but studies can show how many prisons to build when third graders uh, uh, fail the reading test on STAR. And so you, you got to understand that there's power in reading. There's power in reading. So anytime you can get kids a good book for them to read, it is amazing and powerful. All right, those were free things. All right, we're going to continue our journey through the book of Acts. Uh, today we're going to pick up where Pastor Jonathan left off last week and in Acts chapter 18, and I'm going to start in verse 4. He kind of read through this, but I just want to remind us where we are in Acts chapter 18, verse 4. And this is what it says, uh, if you follow along right with me. It says, each Sabbath found Paul at the synagogue. Say with me, the synagogue. Say it again, the synagogue, trying to convince the Jews and Greeks alike. Every single chapter that we read, he finds the synagogue at that new city that he goes and visits, and he begins this debate, he begins this teaching, he begins to convince the Jews and the Greeks. Remember, this is all this is all for the plan that God has placed in his life to reach not just the Jewish community, but also the Greeks and the Gentiles alike. So verse 5, and after Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, remember that he had left them there, Paul spent all his time preaching the word. Somebody say, preaching the word. Say it again, preaching the word. He testified to the Jews, and this is his message. In case people are wondering, what did he preach? This is his message that Jesus, help me out, read it all together, that Jesus was the Messiah. Jesus was the Messiah. This is just constant. This is his message. His message never 
changes. His message never it continues being the same, and it should be ours as well. Somebody say amen. So once again, everything's going good. Everything's happening. Everything, everything is taking place. But you guys know from experience and from reading previous chapters what's about to happen again. Opposition. Once again, look at what Paul is faced with. So this is verse 6. But when they oppose, and help me out, read it out loud. And when they insulted him, Paul shook the dust from his clothes and said, so at this point I feel, in my personal opinion, I feel that Paul just had enough. He just had enough. This is one of the moments in a scripture where he just simply just had enough. And we see his reaction to this insult, to this opposition. I mean, church, we are in chapter 18. Some stories in each chapter, sometimes three, two or three times, uh, he is traveling. It takes place and is being recorded. And we can see and hear. He just came from uh, Athens. He just came from that place. Remember when he went into that courtroom and and he had several different uh, groups of people and and they laughed at him when he began to talk about the resurrection. Uh, You know, praise God that he was able to walk out, but he left that area because it just, to the unknown God, and they could just, they, they, they couldn't accept it. And so here we see his reaction. It says, your blood is upon your own heads. What does it say, church? What does it say? It says, I'm innocent. From now on, I will go preach to the Gentiles. Somebody say, he had enough. Go ahead, tap your neighbor, tell him he had enough. He had enough of uh, uh, his own people, his own culture. His own kin, his own, uh, uh, you know, his, the people that he grew up, the people that he knows the most, he just had enough. He said, that's it. I, I'm just simply going to take my ministry and I'm going to preach to the Gentiles because they are, uh, they are willing to accept it and to listen to it. And they're willing to, to just give me that time. But here he says, that's it, uh, enough. And, and Paul, honestly, he just didn't want to waste any more time preaching to those whose hearts have already uh, uh, made their own decision a definite no. Just a definite no. There's a scripture in Matthew chapter 7, verse 6. I don't have it on the screen, but it says, you know, don't throw the holy things to dogs. Don't cast your uh, pearls to swine. Uh, And and, and it's harsh. It's it's difficult. But uh, here's what I'm learning. I'm learning that there are people who are going to have a definite no. And no, and no, and no, and no. So let us simply don't forget, because we're concentrated on this one individual, this one family, don't forget that there are others around you who are ready to listen to the word of God. They're ready to accept the word. Sometimes, in my opinion, sometimes we just spend too much time on that one individual that already says no, no, no. And it's okay to say, well, you know what? I am innocent. I gave it all I got. I'm not going to forget about everybody else that is around me that is looking and waiting for. Somebody say 80%. Tap your neighbor and tell them 80%. 80%, according to statistics, if those are right, which I, I, I believe they're so, 80% of people out there will say yes to a personal invitation to come to church. But, but how many times would you simply focus on that one, on that one? Uh, I'm... I'm I'm learning to simply say, okay, God, they're in your hands. They're in your hands. I have family members that I've said, Lord, they're in your hands. I preach. I've teached. I send texts. I send scripture. I pray. God, they're in your hands. But I got to continue preaching the word to those who are ready to hear it. So look what he did. What he did in chapter in verse 7. And he left. He left. And went home with Titus Justus, a who, church, a Gentile, help me out, a Gentile who, I love this part, who what? Who worshiped God and lived next door to a synagogue. You know when I thought about this right here? A Gentile named Titus Justus, a Gentile who worshiped God and lived next to a synagogue. Pastor Rabelino, he lived next to a synagogue or next to his church for many years. And I thought about that, that sometimes whenever we are faced with a bunch of opposition and no, and no, and no, and no, and no, and no, you know what is good? 
to go into the house of someone who worships the Lord to just give you that strength. Does anybody know what I'm talking about, right, right? Like, like, like you know, those moments where we just need it, we, we just need just some guidance and counsel, just a coffee and some donuts in the presence of the Lord, and boy, that makes the difference. Just make this. So what did Paul do? You know what? I'm going to go somewhere where I know that the Lord is being worshipped because I just need that moment, that strength right now. And live next to the synagogue. Verse 8. Crispus, the leader of the synagogue, and everyone in his household believed in the Lord. And watch the result, church. Watch the result. Watch the result of moving on, moving on from those who have said no, 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 no. And Paul still showed the love and grace of Jesus to every Jew that he came into contact. He did not change his way. He did not stereotype and, 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 and threw a blanket statement and say, well, all Jews want to deny the Lord. No, 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 no. He was still, uh, 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 you know, show love and mercy. So watch. Watch the result of moving on from uh, teaching in, in verse 6 to those who are opposed and insulted. Watch this. Many others in Corinth... Also, help me out, also heard Paul. Let's say that one more time. Also heard Paul, became believers, and were baptized. Praise be the Lord. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. That's the, that's the result of what happened whenever Paul said, you know what? I'm done here. I got to move on. There are other people who are waiting for the gospel of Jesus Christ. There are other people who are waiting for that. There are other people who are waiting. That's why we get excited when uh, you guys bring in new family members, new friends, uh, new neighbors. You bring them into the church because we're excited that someone else is hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I mean, we're excited about that. Um, listen, I'm, uh, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, I, I love preaching the gospel to all of you. I love preaching the word of God to all of you. Uh, but, but, but I hope and our goal is that we are not the only ones hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. I hope that as you listen to it, that you take it with you, and wherever you go, that you share it with someone else. Someone say amen. So, for example, today's lesson, if it fits into the conversation of whatever you're doing, that you will share it with someone and say, well, let me tell you what I've been learning about Acts chapter 18. Or, or let me just tell you what, what, I've been, what I've been going through and how through what God is doing in our church, it, it, is just, it is just beautiful and it's amazing. I just want to share it with you. I want to share that with you. I want to share with you what the word of God says because he is with us. So now we come to a beautiful moment in Paul's life. Um, anybody ever heard the uh, phrase, life is like a roller coaster? Ever heard that before? If not, you just heard it for the first time, put it on a shirt, you know, okay? Uh, life is like a roller coaster. There's always ups and downs and ups and downs. And if we could have a perfect example of a life of a roller coaster in, a, in, in, in his ministry specifically, Paul was just going up and down and up and down. He had his moments where people would applaud and praise the Lord for what God was doing through Paul's life and the ministry and, and reaching the Gentiles. As a matter of fact, there's some parts in Scripture that we already read where the people would welcome him into the church and want to hear what God was doing in the Gentile nation, and he was just sharing. I can, I can just imagine Paul with a big smile just saying, let me tell you, let me tell you what God is doing. Let me tell you, God is reaching this Gentile nation. Man, we just simply go to the synagogue. We begin to have a dialogue, and people are listening, and people are, are, are receiving it. And as a matter of fact, we just came from Corinth, and, and they believe, and they received it, and they even got baptized right then and there. And he, you can tell his excitement as he talks about what God is doing through uh, the ministry that he is walking around through all of the land. Uh, we, uh, Pastor Jonathan showed that map last time where you can see how, how much he's traveled as well. But if you have been with us since the beginning of this book, you have seen kind of a pattern, or at least through the time where uh, the church began in, uh, in that, that southern part there in, Ju in Jerusalem 
and how they begin to get scattered. And, and, and if you were with us, whenever Paul began and took on that ministry where Peter just kind of became more of an, uh, of a, of a, of an apostle or, or more of a, of a consul, uh, more of a, of a pillar to the church where uh, different issues will be brought to him. But, but Paul and, and different men begin to travel all around, as you can see that red uh, line, all across. And, and if you've been with us, you've seen those, those moments of praise God for what God is doing through Paul's life. And, and Paul would preach, and then what happened? He was put in prison. And then he would get out, uh, and, and then he would preach again, and then he was beat to death. Almost, almost the Bible says that he, he looked like he was dead, uh, just laying on the ground. And, and what the scripture said, he just, he just dust off and went back into the city to preach again. And then he would preach again, and they would be rejected. And then he would preach again, and he was thrown out of the city. And then he would preach again and in prison again. And Pastor Andrew uh, brought us that, that, that gruesome image of how he was held uh, in, in, the, in, ch in uh, chapter 12, I believe, where he was in, in chains, both his hands and feet, and just stretched, left to die. Then, but then he would get out of prison and then preach again. And then insulted and preach again. And then rejected, but he will preach again. And, and, and I don't know but if this was a point where he just had enough. That's why he said, you know what, I'm done. He shook the dust of his. In other words, I'm not taking anything out of this city. When, when, when they would shake their, the dust from their uh, clothing or their sandals, that's, that's what they were saying. They were saying, not even a grain of sand do I want to take away from this place. I don't want to remember anything. So he had a, what I would consider a, 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 a moment of humanity where he just, he was afraid probably. You know, in Athens, he was facing, uh, you know, he had a culture shock of, how can people not know about God? But now in Corinth, Pastor Jonathan mentioned that you know, Corinth was a different city. Corinth was a city where it was an, an immoral city. They, they thought everything was just about themselves and self-pleasure. People would, there were certain people who, they would connect everything to God. Everything was God's. Everything, we are God's. And it's all self, it's all about me. It's all about the connection of nature and things. And, 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 and so now we come to, to Corinth where it's, it's just, Paul is like, what else can I do? And so we come to this moment in verse 9 where I, I felt that as those who are leaders of a life group or kids world or girls ministry, Royal Rangers, uh, pastors who are here and all of you who have had a chance to bring the word. I think we've all, even if you're not a preacher, you're just simply trying to live this Christian life and you feel a moment of weakness. Here Paul has this moment that says that one night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision. And what did he tell him, church? What did he said? Don't be afraid. You see, for the longest, I don't know about you, but for the longest, I've thought of Paul as being a superhuman. Are you with me? I mean, he, he's traveled so far, right? Never once complained about how his feet hurt, how his sandals, how many times he had to change them. Never once was it mention of his hardship through a dust storm or through, uh, you know, some bandits trying to steal the things that he has. That wasn't important to him. What was most important is to tell you and, and for Luke to write about what God was doing through the life of Paul. Now, yes, he does mention the times that Paul was beaten and put in prison. Yes, it, it is in there. But he comes out every single time. That at the midnight hour, the angel shook that place and their chains fell. And then we read that he just simply 
tells the, the, uh, the guard, hey, don't, 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 don't kill yourself. We're all here. And so we think about, man, he just spent hours being stretched to its limits. They were talking about how, you know, with his legs being pulled, he was constantly just having like that Charlie horse feeling that, you know, sometimes, I don't know about you, but sometimes you wake up there in the middle of the night and it's like, geez, you know, trying to stretch that out. But then all of a sudden he just, you know, he gets out of prison and what does he do? He preaches the gospel to not only the, the, the jailer, but then they go to his house and he preaches the gospel to his whole family there. And then you see him here how he is being uh, insulted. Now, I don't know about you, but I, I have not, I have not had a moment where someone got on my face and insulted me with language and words. Now, I've seen it. I've, se I've seen it done. I have not, but I can, I, I can only imagine what Paul was going through for the cause of Jesus. And, and so I am glad that verse 9 takes place. Just to let us know that Paul was someone like you and me who also needed the strengthening of our Lord and Savior every single day. That you do not look at Paul and say, well, I'm not going to be like Paul. And, uh, you know, that's the superhuman power. No, Paul had feelings. And he, why did the Lord say, don't be afraid? Do you think just because the Lord loves to say that phrase? No, because he knew that Paul was afraid. He knew that Paul needed to hear those words. He knew that Paul needed to be encouraged. I don't know about you, but after this couple of years, I just need the Lord to continue encouraging me to keep going in the direction that he wants us to go. Because how many times, even through this, we have faced, as a church, we have faced the fear of being shut down, being completely silent. And right now, church, you got to watch this movement of canceling culture. Eventually, church, is, it, it could eventually look at the word of God and said, we got to cancel the Bible. And we got to be careful because our doors remain open. Our sanctuary remains open. But there will be a time like other countries where persecution will be evident even in our own country. And even through what we just went through, I don't know about you, but I need the voice of the Lord to come to us and just simply say, hey, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. What else did he say? Speak out. Don't be silent. Exclamation marks all over in case you, 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 see, you see it there. As the Lord is like, come on. I know who you are, and I know who I created, and I know who I gave. Because let me tell you something, church. Sometimes we might be afraid of physical things. Sometimes we might be afraid of what we are seeing. But can I be honest? Sometimes we are afraid of the unknown. We're afraid because we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to end up on the other side. We don't know if we're going to make it. We don't know if the healing is going to go. We don't know. If, if, if We don't know. And sometimes that brings us even more fear. But God is here to tell you and remind you, don't be afraid. Come on, let your neighbor know. Tell them, don't be afraid. Speak out. Don't be silent. And I love this phrase. And I want all of us to read it together in verse 10. Ready? For I am with you. Oh, we need to read it one more time as loud as you can. For I am with you. It's my favorite phrase. I am with you. I am with you. Somebody needs to hear that today. That God is with you. He is. Let that sink in for a second. That the God who created the heavens and the earth, it's right there with you. Okay, it's right there. It says, don't be afraid, I'm with you. What does it say? He continues, and no one will attack you and harm you. And many people 
For many people in this city, oh, I love this. What does it say? Belong to me. You know, I keep telling the youth and I keep telling Sunday mornings when we get together, we are not the only believers here in this world. We are a group of millions of believers who are trusting in our Lord and Savior and him coming soon. How many of you know that he is coming soon for his people? He is coming soon for his bride. He's coming soon. Are you ready to join those millions of people? Because many of us belong to Jesus. And whatever you're going through, you're not alone. Not because you have a physical church, but because God has promised that on his word. For I am with you. He is with you. He is with you. There are three things. If you can jot this down or just memorize these three things. These are three promises that he is with you. When he is with you, his, pro- his presence is with you. Somebody say amen. When he, is, when he is with you, his presence is with you. He is with you. And, and I don't know how many of you have ever felt that before, but you walk into a home of someone who just loves the Lord, and you just feel this presence that is just a beautiful, beautiful. You just want to stay there. You just want to see there's this presence that walks with those that trust in the Lord. Number two, uh, when, God is, when, when, when God is with you, his love, his compassion is with you. You feel it. You look around and you feel this compassion towards others. You look around and you feel like, man, I want to do something to help out. His compassion, his love is with you. And number three, his peace is with you. His peace is with you. I don't know how many times I walked into a room where you can feel the tension. Uh, What is that phrase? You can cut it with a knife. You feel that tension. But you walk into a room Not sarcastically, but you walk into the room with just peace, knowing that God is on my side, that God is with me, that God is with me. How many texts did we receive? How many phone calls did we get? How many hospital visitations could we done? And how many events have we done? But in that middle of all of them, oh, our faith gets tested. Our our emotions, uh, our emotions get, you know, uh, uh, um, tested. they react real quick. Uh, as a matter of fact, if, if I'm correct, your emotions react faster. I believe it's three times faster. You will react in your emotions three times faster than you just processing what you're about to do. Ever, 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 um, um, ever asked a kid after he did something, why did you do it? And they're like, well, I don't know. I don't know what I did it. Anybody has done that before? Well, it's because our emotions react faster than our thinking process does. So they really don't know why they did it. They really didn't because their, their emotions just reacted. So they just, I don't know what I did. I just hit him and he began to cry. I, I don't know. I don't know why. And it's the same thing. But God's presence is with you. God's love is with you. And God's peace is with you. So look at what Paul did. This is verse 11. So after I don't know. It doesn't give us all those details. I, I wish it did, but, but I wish there was a verse between 10 and 11. Because in verse 11, after God just speaking to him in a vision, what, verse 11, so Paul stayed there. For the next year and a half, he stayed in Corinth, teaching the word of God. If I'm, this is the longest time he stayed in any place before. Why? Because the Lord strengthened his spirit to not be afraid, to not stay silent, but to continue preaching the word of God. To continue preaching the word of God. So, for I am with you, he heard it. So, God prepared for Paul for what was to come. Let's continue going on into verse 12. Because you already know. Paul just had a moment of weakness, in my opinion, of of fear of what's going to happen in Corinth. He is facing a lot of opposition. He's facing a lot of uh, 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 different kinds of of people there, people who are just uh, uh, insulting him. And and, and then he has this moment of, 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 in a vision, hearing the word of the Lord uh, and, and, and just strengthening enough to where he decides to stay there and to continue preaching the word of God and saying, you know what, God is with me. And if he's with me, nothing is going to change the fact of what God has promised in my life. Uh, And and so in verse 12, you already know what's going to happen. 
But when Galileo became governor of Achaia, some Jews, again, his own people, rose up together against Paul, and they brought him before the governor for what, church? For judgment. So here we go again. You got to understand that God in all his might and all his strength and all his knowledge, he is the one that, uh, that in our lives things happen. And he just says, listen, this is happening because I want to teach you something new. This is taking place because I want to show you something. What the enemy has a plan and, and, and meant to do harm and to do evil, I'm going to turn it around and turn it into something good that is going to strengthen your faith. And in here it says that he was brought before the government for judgment. Verse 13, they accused Paul of murder. No. They accused Paul of stealing. No. They accuse Paul of vandalizing. No. They accuse Paul of, no, none of the things that you can imagine or think of. They accuse Paul of persuading people to worship God in ways that were contrary to the law. They were accusing Paul. Remember what he was accused of uh, back in the church of, uh, in the city of Thessalonica? He was accused of, of causing trouble all over the world. Uh, let, me, let, let me tell you something, church. If I want to be accused of anything, I want to be accused of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ and lives being turned around completely. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Like, like mindsets turn around completely. Like lifestyles turn around completely because of the power of Jesus Christ and what he does in someone's life. Anyone's life has been turned completely around because of Jesus Christ here. Can you just make some noise and say, my life has been completely turned upside down because of the Lord. So, so I'm, a, I'm sure that as Paul stood there before judgment, that the words of the Lord kept being echoing in his heart and in his mind. For I am with you. So there's a difference to stand before your accusers in judgment when you don't have no one to back you up in your corner. But there's a difference to stand in front of your accusers in judgment when you know that the one on your corner has already paid it all and you are innocent of everything they're accusing you and he is right there representing you. That's a big difference because I'm sure that Paul just stood there with confidence in his heart. No, and you guys, sure, you can accuse me. Go ahead. But the Lord made me a promise that he is with me and that no harm is going to be uh, is going to come to my heart. I just know it. He just promised me that, and I believe it. And I believe it. So as he's standing there, look at what happens in the next verse, in verse 14. So Paul was about to open his lips and start to make for his defense. So Paul, uh, man, guys, I've been here before. I've done this <laughs> many times. So here I go again. So it says, but just as Paul started to make his defense... Galio turned to Paul's accuser, remember this is the, the one in charge, and said, Listen, you Jews, if this were a case involving some wrongdoing or serious crime, I would have a reason to accept it, to accept your case. But, verse 15, since it's merely a question of words and names in your Jewish law, take care of it yourself. I refuse to judge such matters. And he threw them out of the courtroom. He threw them out. For I am with you, God was telling Paul. Now, why is this important? Why is this important? Here's what's important. If Paul would have been found guilty, then guess what? He would not have been able to go to any other city and preach the gospel anymore. Because now he has been found guilty uh, of, of committing this crime, quote unquote. So in other words, every governor of every city would have run the, 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 the word around and say, do not allow this criminal in your city 
because we have stamped under his name, in, uh, you know, on his name, that he is, has broken the law. He is a criminal, do not. But church, God takes care, God took care of Paul. And then because of this moment, he continued to travel throughout the land preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Here's what I am I, I'm believing. I'm believing that there are things in our lives, church. There are things, there are moments, there are situations in our lives that God takes care of it himself. Because he needs you to continue being in that job site. He needs you to continue being at that school. He needs you to continue being at that workplace. He needs you to continue being there in your family, in this city, in this state, in this county, where everybody, he takes care of things just so that you can continue preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone that comes in contact with you. That's what I believe. So then the crowd grabbed Sosthenes, the leader of the synagogue, and I'll finish with this. So just, just picture what's happening. Just picture what's taking place. Paul is brought to judgment. And then the, 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 the leader there says, no, this is not my business. He throws him out. So Peter walks out. He walks out free. No harm. No, he wasn't whipped. He wasn't in prison. He wasn't chained up. God was with him. They walked out. Now, I want to finish with this because this is an important part. And this is how I want to speak to any leader of your family. Uh, this is any leader of your family. You're a father, you're a leader of your family. You're a mom, you're a leader of your family. You're a grandma, grandpa, and, and, and you're the head of that household. You're the leader of that family. Uh, I want to speak to you because, because here, here's what took place. So the crowd, so they were thrown out of the courtroom. Paul was not found guilty. He's found innocent. That allows him to continue preaching the gospel. Praise God for that. But then I want you to see what happened next. The crowd grab Sosthenes, which now happened to be the leader. Remember, we heard Crespus, but now times passed, and now we have a new synagogue leader. His name is Sosthenes. And what did they do, church? They beat him right before the courtroom. And here's where Galileo did wrong. Here's what he did wrong. But Galileo paid no attention. Listen, there, there's, there's, this, there's this separation of church and state. There's this, there's this law that does not allow government to govern over what churches do. But we do want that protection that when the injustice happens, for people to do something about it, for our leaders to be taken care of, for our pastors to be taken care of, for the leaders of the home to be taken care of. And now this leader has been, now he was probably a bystander watching to see what's going to happen to Paul. And because he was a leader of the church, he was dragged out and beaten in front of the courthouse. Church, you need to pray for your leaders. Pray for the leaders of your household, of your, of your church. Nine times out of ten, your leaders, your parents, your pastors, were taking that spiritual beaten for what's happening in the supernatural. For what is happening outside of our of what we can see. You know, some people are in pain. Some people are suffering. Some people are, 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 are paying the consequences for their sin, and for their wrongdoing. But there's others who are in pain. There's brothers and sisters who are in spiritual pain because they're praying and believing that God is going to do something in the life of others. If you are a life group leader, you feel it. Because as much as you pour into people's life, all the enemy comes and tries to discourage you. If you're a leader of your family, how many times you try to be that mom, that dad, that support system, but you don't see any progress. You don't see people change. You see the same thing over and over. And that just discourages you. And you feel beaten in your spirit. Pray for your leaders. Let's finish up. Verse 18, Paul stayed in Corinth for some time after that. Then he said goodbye to the brothers and sisters and went to here to nearby uh, Sinchera. First time he's not forced out. Did you notice that? This time he actually said goodbye. <laughs> I'll be back. He shaved his head according to Jewish custom, uh, um, um, uh, marking the end of a bow. Then he set sail to Syria, taking Priscilla and Aquila with him. And we'll learn about them next week. Verse 19 they stopped first at the port of Ephesus, 
where Paul left the others behind. Ephesus was actually a place where he wanted to go, but the Holy Spirit said, no, not yet. Two years later, we're looking at here where he actually gets a chance to go to Ephesus. Let me tell you, God's perfect timing will always uh, out, we're always out, out, um, out, what is the word? We're always, huh? Outperform, our way, that's the one, our way, our own timing. While he was there, he went to the synagogue to reason with the Jews. Here we go, once again. They asked him to stay a little longer, but he declined. As he left, however, he said, I will come back later. And I don't know, but maybe this is where we get our phrase, God willing. You ever heard that before? God willing. Then he set sail from Ephesus, verse 22. The next stop was at the port of Caesarea. From there he went up and visited the church at Jerusalem. So if you can put that map just to end here. He's actually gone full circle. He's actually gone full circle, church. I'm going to ask the band to go ahead and come up. He's, he, he's actually done a full circle. Now he's back to the church that sent him off. Jerusalem. He's done a full circle. Three years later, done a full circle. And then where else did he go? He went to Antioch, the church where he stayed there for a year to listen and to hear. So what is he doing going around to now all of these churches? After spending some time in Antioch, Paul went back to Galatia and Prigia, visiting and watch this, strengthening all the believers. This is in verse 23. Strengthening, visiting, and strengthening all the believers. See, Paul's passion was to make disciples, not to just simply make converts. We should not be just strong whenever we accept Jesus Christ that first week and that first month. Our strength should continue to grow as we get to know Jesus more and more every single day. Our strength. You today, you and I should be much stronger in our faith than we were a year ago. Amen. You, you and I should be stronger in our faith and confidence of who Jesus is today than we were a year ago. And guess what? A year from now, God willing, right? A year from now, our faith should be stronger than our faith is today in 2021. We are continuing to grow. We are continuing to grow. Go ahead and stand to your feet. We are continuing to grow and grow and grow and grow and grow and grow. And grow. We love when they're in a baby stage, right? Don't we love it? We just love when the baby is in a baby stage. My wife, with all these new babies coming around, she's like, oh, my God, oh, giddy, oh, my God, hugs, hugs, pictures, pictures. All of you are, right? Every single one. Ah, the fresh, freshness of newborn, new, new birth, uh, newborn. Ah, I just want to smell their hair. Just receive all that youth, right? But then eventually we're like, okay, the crying face, uh, the sleepless nights. Come on, somebody, right? Let's, okay, let's, let's move on. And then they get to their twos or threes, known as the terrible twos. And they're there learning how to walk. And then once they figure out how to walk, they figure out that if they push your buttons, all of a sudden you get their attention even more. So what do they do? They push your buttons and they drop things and they run and they push things and they connect things and they drop things. And you're like, oh, my God, that's so cute. Video, 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 picture, 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 picture. But after all your dishes are broken, then what happens? Okay, enough with this. Enough with this, right? Enough. Let's move on. And then they have their, 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 their age of five, six, seven. And then, you're, man, this is good. They're dependent. I don't have to tie their shoes every five minutes. You know, I don't have to wake them up. They're, they're on their own. I don't have to feed them. They feed themselves. What? You know, you're like, oh, my God. But then eventually you're like, okay, but let's, let's, you know, I need you to, you know, help me in the yard. So I need you to be a little, come on, let's go. Then they're teenagers. And you're like, yes, I got another helper in the house. But then they don't help. And you're like, okay, we got to get out for this stage. 
you know, we got to get out from this stage because I thought you were going to help me with dishes and, uh, and wash the car, but all you do is play video games and things. We got to get out of the stage. We got to get out of this stage. And then they come to young adults and the, 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 the amount of maturity that happens is incredible. Uh, and parents, by the way, a, 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 the brain of a female matures by the age of 23. The brain of a male doesn't mature until the age of 28. So have patience with us. A lot more patience. And so what, we, what happens? Then, okay, mijo, you've been here. Okay, sweetheart, you've been here. What's your career? And we move him on, right? And then yesterday we had the beautiful moment of marrying uh, uh, Raymond Jr. and Vanessa. And it was beautiful to see them. And they would cry. There were tears in their eyes. Just uh, nonstop tears. Because it's beautiful. Marriage is beautiful when it's done the right way. And, and families are both of them together ch- shouting yes, applauding for them and coming to the altar and accepting one another and saying till death do us apart. And it's just a beautiful moment. And that's our experience that's what we want. So we see that progression in a natural sense. Well, guess what? There's also a growth that happens in our spiritual lives as well. Father, I pray, Lord, that in the moments that you are stretching us, in the moments that you are molding us and and, and pulling this side here and this side there and, and, and breaking us and then starting all over again, I pray that your spirit would be right there every single step of the way, every single step of the way. Jesus, we don't want to be the same a year from now. We want to be stronger in our faith with you. We want to be stronger because we have a provider. Your name is Jaira, who provides the lesson and the strength, provides the, 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 the solution to our, the, the answer to our question. You provide what we need so that we can continue to grow, so that we can continue to mature in our walk with you, Jesus. So I pray for your church. I pray for all of us. We all need spiritual growth. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's worship together here this morning. Sing this walk we call Christianity. To be a Christian means that you belong to the party of Christ. You belong to Jesus. So in order for you to grow, first you have to be born again. And how do we do that? We accept the Lord in our hearts so that he can forgive our sins and give us a new life, being born again. Four things we know is that God loves you so much. We are sinners. We need a Savior. The third thing is that God loves you so much that even while you were a sinner, 
he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And the fourth thing we believe is that today is a perfect day for you to accept that gift called salvation. To ask him to forgive your sins and for you to take the first step into your new life with Jesus. You're not alone. You won't be alone. There are many others here who have made that decision and around the world as well. And besides all of that, the promise of God in Acts chapter 19, which I encourage you guys to print that out, put it somewhere where you can see it as a reminder to not be afraid, to not stay silent, speak out, for God is with you. He is with you. No harm will be done. So right there we are. If you close your eyes, bow your heads. If you have not made Jesus the Lord and Savior of your life, of you, if you made him before but you walked away, this is a perfect moment for you to accept him once again. Would you repeat, church? Would you repeat with us? Say, Jesus, we come before you as a sinner, and I ask you to save me. Come into my heart. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your head bowed. I have my eyes open. I have a couple of leaders that have their eyes open. If you made that prayer for the first time or you dedicated your life to him again, would you lift your hand up high, uh, as high as you can? I want to see your hand. I want to make sure that I, that you are, that you, I see you. I see you back there. Thank you so much. Anyone else? This is your moment. This is your time. This is you. Father, thank you for the opportunity of uh, this individual who lifted her hand, Father, and said, I want to give my life to Jesus again this morning. Thank you for that moment that has changed her history and her future because we know, God, that with you all things are just more amazing than anything else. We praise you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, church. Let's give God praise this morning. Come on, give it, give it, give it, give it to him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The ushers are going to be passing by. If you lift a big hand or you just simply didn't for whatever reason, there are two tables with banners that says welcome. I want, I want you to visit that table. We want to give you a Bible. We want to give you a gift. We want to pray with you more than anything. Just connect with you. Even if, it was, even if it's not for salvation, maybe you just need someone to pray with you, uh, someone to connect with you, please just visit that table. Someone will be there to pray with you as well. It's a new month. It's the month of November. A lot of Thanksgiving things going on. Um, so the scripture for this month for offering is in Psalms 50, 23. And it says the following. It says, but giving things, check this out. But giving things is a sacrifice that what church? That truly honors me. This is God speaking. If you keep to my path, I will reveal to you the salvation of God. That's incredible. If we stay on this course, growing, 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 we'll find salvation in God. Father, bless the cheerful giver. Bless our given here this morning. Those who have given online, through their phone, internet, bless them as well. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. Come on, bring your offering in time this morning. ways that you can continue to grow, to be stronger in our faith when things come our way. No, 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 no. I've grown in my walk with the Lord. I've grown in my walk with the Lord. You know, one of the first things that my wife and I did when we were, you know, very young and very, um, uh, not very wise, we went to one of those seminars where if you listen to them, they give you a free gift. 
but it's actually to persuade you to buy one of those uh, uh, timeshare things, right? And, uh, but th this time it was going to be a trip. You can win a trip just by going and, and, and listening to their presentation and walking away with some china that cost us two thousand dollars yeah the china's still there the two thousand dollars is not ask me how many times we use the china ask me go ahead ask me none we have been married for we're going to celebrate 17 years next weekend and we have never used our china i deserve that So we have grown and we're more knowledgeable that the next time you get a phone call that says that the prince of some country wants to donate all this money, if you give them, the, you know, your phone and your social security and all of that, that you know what we do? Click. We hang up because we are grown now. Monday night prayer, seven o'clock, live groups on Wednesday. That's a great place to continue growing in God's Word. And ladies, this Saturday, remember this is your time, a Saturday morning, breakfast, a free event for you, starts at 9.30. Breakfast will be in the fellowship hall, and then you will come in here for a beautiful morning with worship and a word. This is an event that is completely free, available for ladies, young, uh, young ladies, and our youth girls as well. So we encourage you to do so. And then finally, young people, get ready for our youth uh, service coming up in a couple of weeks. More details to come. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We praise you. We exalt you. For you're the King of kings and Lord of lords. In Jesus' name, amen. Church, God bless you.